Yo, 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 gamer gamers, what's poppin', what's shakin', and welcome to my long-awaited animations tutorial. This tutorial will teach you everything you need to know about how to use the animations menu and how to spice up your own animations yourself. Now, small disclaimer, I'm probably actually not going to talk about the animations menu that much. I just want to give you a step-by-step -step process on how I make the animations. But if it comes up, I'll say it. Might as well just go over a little tutorial. So, <clears throat> first, top left. We have the runtime motions. The runtime motions are all of the RTP animations. Some of them suck. Actually, all of them suck. And that's why I'm making the. Actually, this one's alright. That's why I'm making the refurbished animations. Runtime effects. These are the. The effects of the game. Critical hits. Status effect. Um, you know, anything. Usually, spells. Animations for magic attacks. When was that one added? Now, original motions. It's gonna start blank. But it's where all of the... All of your animations go. The animations that you make, but most importantly, the ones you import. Now, you can directly edit... Ah, <laughs> uh, you can directly edit the RTP. And it'll show up properly. But only... Only... If you set the class's animations to the RTP version, we have two categories, runtime and original. Runtime are the RTP ones, you know, these animations. Like, we have the male assassin here. But I don't want the male assassin, because the male assassin uses... He, it's not alphabetical. Uh, uses this one. This one, it's alright, you know, but... I have my own version, and it's tied to something called the Rogue. And you know, it's a lot smoother, it's got some cool effects. And of course, it's got critical hit animations. I don't want the, uh, the runtime motions, I want the original motions. And the original ones are the ones that you create. So after this tutorial, make sure you set the fight of the Lord to the original lord and not this lord it's in alphabetical order for me uh, there's something you can do in the chat settings to change it to look alphabetical what i'm gonna do let's let's uh, end original effects so you can guess Ooh, this one's like 60 fps that's nice oh wow Ooh, wowzer dowser so as you can see right here, every single one of these frames is on screen for zero frames. Now, I don't think that means it's on screen. Uh, SRPG Studio runs at 60 FPS, which is a lot better than in most games. 60 FPS real smooth. Always keep that in mind. 60 frames per second. If you want there to be a second pause, make it 60. See? Now, when it says zero frames, that means it lingers on the screen for zero frames, not that the entire animation is zero frames. It's 48 frames, so a little under a second, but since they're all zero frames, that means that they don't linger. They just immediately go to the next one. Like, they immediately go to the next one. Now, if these were all one frame, that would double the time into being slightly under two seconds. <clears throat> so think of zero as actually being one, but you know, since it's 60 FPS, one frame, that's like near impossible to see with the human eye. Uh, I'll, lay some down, I'll lay down some ground rules later. This is just a very basic introduction. Now we have the motion types. Motion types are very important. Um, by default, you have none of these. Not none of these. These are the ones that you add. By default, <clears throat> we have, for the archers, wait, bow attack one, avoid. For the fighters, we have wait, move, direct attack, indirect, avoid, direct attack two. That's all. And uh, the mage is same as the archers. In which it's uh, wait, magic attack, avoid. And then the motion types are things you add. For example, I add crit attacks, magic attacks, crit indirect attacks, crit magic attacks, and I like to add critical move as well, it's pretty fun. 
Uh, Archer, I don't personally do longbow, but this is what Vaughn did. Uh, like, I personally name rogues assassins in my projects, but, um, the, the assignment was to create rogue animation. So it's called rogue. It's, it's not, not what I wanted to do, but it's what Vaughn wanted, and that's why I started this whole thing, because Vaughn, Vaughn wanted me to get animations for this. <clears throat> so, of the motion types, you can get a wait, move, critical move, finisher move, which is when they move towards the enemy. All the ones that are move is when they move towards the enemy. We have move, that's normal. Critical move is when you move and you're about to do a critical hit. It leads directly into crit attack one or crit attack two. No. Yeah, yeah, or crit direct finisher. Let's go to a different menu, actually. This is the battle motions menu. It's very important. It, uh, it's how the game reads the animations. Wait. Wait happens as soon as the battle starts. Normally, it's just the default idle pose, but I add entrance animations on the wait motions. Move is when the uh, target, uh, when the unit moves to the target. Critical move. They move to the target, and they're about to unleash a critical hit. We'll talk about that later. Finisher move. I believe, by default, finisher move is what plays when they move to the target, and they're just gonna kill them. I have a plugin that I wrote myself that replaces finisher move and finisher move attack, just removes them, and just has it play crit move attack, or just crit move. Move attack is when they attack after moving. Crit move attack is when they critical attack after moving. <laughs> now, you'll see that move attack and direct attack 1 are the exact same because I don't care about this, but the option does exist if you want, like, a horse to have a separate animation. Since it's move attack, that basically means you walked towards the enemy and then you attack. Direct attack 1, of course, being the opposite, means that either, um... It's triggered by, like, you attack them more than twice per round with, like, Adept or something. Or, uh, if you're counterattacking the enemy. This could come in play. I don't really do it because I don't really feel a need to. There's not really any nuances I need. Crit move attack is the same. And then we have direct, uh, oh, wait, finish move attack. Uh, it's just when you move towards them and attack them and kill them. And, uh, the thing is, you either... Mm, it will not prioritize crit move attack, it will only prioritize finisher move attack. So that's why I wrote a plugin that removes finisher move attack. Now it only does it if it's a finisher move and a critical move. Otherwise it's just a normal move attack, even if you kill them. It just got really annoying how you didn't get a crit but it did the crit animation, or you did get a crit and it didn't do the crit animation. Anyways, direct attack 2, that's when you attack again. Either you follow up attack, you have something like uh, Adept, maybe you have a Brave Sword, and you do a second attack. Really cool. Now, it should be of note that you shouldn't really have direct attack 1 designed to put, to put itself directly into direct attack 2, but you should have them be different and flow into each other a bit. Like, um, if you're a puncher, direct attack 1 is punching with the right fist, direct attack 2 is punching with the left fist. And they can play separately, but they're of course designed to play right after the other, but they will usually play separately, like, direct attack 1 occurs, and then the enemy attacks you, and direct attack 2 occurs. But from direct attack 2, uh, from direct attack 1, you can also get crit direct attack 2 if your second attack is a crit. Or if your first attack is a crit, you have crit direct attack 1, and that's what these two are. Me personally, I removed both of them and replaced them both with just crit direct attack 1. In my primary project, Dank Boy's Quest, I actually do have direct 1, direct 2, and finisher. Uh, let's actually move there real quick so I can show off how exactly it works. I didn't do this in the rear for Rift Animate. Ignore him. So this is Dank Boy's Quest, you know? Uh, it's actually the start of the refurbished animations, because I just didn't like... Uh, um, well, we'll go into this later, but basically the default of SRPG Studio is that the characters are like a mile away, and they gotta run towards each other to fight. And I just didn't think it flowed well, so uh, I shortened the gap between them, and I needed to make new motion, new indirect attacks, and that's how I got the whole refurbished animation started. 
Dragon Boy's Quest isn't really updated with my new animations yet, so it's pretty lame. But here's the example. So we have Crit Direct Finisher. Okay. You see? Uh, the first one is just the generic crit. Second one is my crit animation whenever I have the Ekasax weapon. And then Crit Direct 2 is a Crit Direct Finisher with the Ekasax. It's longer to show off. Oh, and here's Finisher Move. It's not Crit Move. I don't know if I have Crit Move in this. Oh, I do. I, I've got a lot of... <laughs> I've got a lot of things. Um, now back to Acid, of course. I only have one. And so, could definitely play around with the Crit Direct Attacks. But I'll be honest, I usually don't, I don't need, don't feel the need to, but sometimes, just sometimes, you want a character to have two crit animations. And that's actually something really good about the engine, because you could have, in the motion types, let's have, um, let's make a new motion type, and it'll be custom, direct attack, and it'll be called, uh, Ekasax. Crit. Okay, it'll be called Ekasax Crit. And it's added to every single guy. Now, here's the thing though the Ekasax can only be used by one class. That being, like, the Great Lord, I guess. So, you don't have to make any of the Ekasax Crits and just have, like, the Great Lord, wherever he is. And then if you give him the Ekasax Crit, let's just copy from here. Bam, that's his Ekasax Crit. Then, you go down to the Ekasax, which I actually have in this game, and then, battle motions, all the weapons have their own motions, and so I'm going to override it so that if you have the Ekasax equipped, it changes it to Ekasax crit. Okay, and uh, it can only be used by the Great Lord. And then, the existence of Ekasax crit doesn't change anything unless you set it. And so you can have like 4,000 motions. You can have only one class in the game have damage animations. Only one class in the game have a critical move. Only one class in the game even have just the ability to dodge an attack. Because it's so fluid like that. You can have a void 2, but only have a void 2 be read by the sergeant. And then everyone else just has a void 1 for both of them. Make sense? There's also none. Uh, you can only, I think you can only set none to damage. My, my Furbish animations doesn't have damage animations, because, like, it just doesn't work unless you make new uh, sprites for it. Like, I guess you can just have um, the sniper fall back, I guess, but I didn't want to do that. <sighs> now, here's the hard part. Magic weapon attack. It sounds simple, right? They wield a magic weapon, and instead of using a normal attack, they use a magic weapon attack. It's not that simple. Uh, the weapon itself, uh, here's the light brand. You don't need to set this, but you need to click that it's a magical weapon, okay? I don't even know if you need to click it's a magical weapon, but I think you do. I'm pretty sure you do. And then you have to go to weapon effects, and then set magic attack effects. Okay, you have to do that. If you don't, it'll read it as either an indirect weapon or a normal weapon. You have to have magic attack effect and magical weapon. Maybe not the second part. And only then will it actually use the magic weapon attack animations. Which, that's as complicated as it gets. I'll be completely honest, that is as hard and complicated as animating in the engine gets. It's actually pretty easy. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. Last things last. The, oh, hold on. Also the archers. Okay, so you know, we have all these. They're pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just going to go over them real quick. Uh, did all this. Damage is when you get damaged, damage defeated is when you get damaged, and you also die at the same time. And, uh, whenever you add one of these, let's add, let's add, uh, damage defeated, it gets removed, you can't click it. These are basically just, uh, basically just templates, actually. Crit Direct 2? Bam, you can't add Crit Direct 2. But if you wanted another Crit Direct 2, well, let's make a direct attack. Call it Crit Direct Three, baby! That baby! And now you have Crit Direct 3. 
Now, I'm probably going to have to clean up a lot of this after the tutorial because we are not adding, like, any of the... Oh. Oh, right. Damage motion number. I haven't messed with this, and I don't understand it. <laughs> I just do not under... Let's go to this. You can do that, by the way, if you haven't know. Changes an enemy whose attacks hit to the damage motion type was created... Uh, I think what it does, don't quote me, because I haven't messed around with this, but, like, it's for, like, really advanced, you know, you make your own animations, and you have, like, 40 animations per character. I think that, like, it's for, like, oh, here's a, here's the damage animation that plays if you get slashed, here's the damage animation that plays when you get stabbed, and here's the damage animation that plays when you get crushed. And then you have, like, direct attack 1, stab, direct attack 2, slash, direct attack 2, crush. And then it... I'm pretty... That... That's probably what it is. But... I don't know for certain. And I don't think I will ever make a game at that complicated. Archers and mages are basically the same. You'll find that out pretty soon if you delve even a little deep. Archers and mages, basically the same. They've only- they've got like the same exact thing. Basically, they don't have movement. That's- that's it. But archers, they have an arrow, and the arrow travels. You make the arrow. Whereas mages, they have a magic loop. Where as they cast a spell, it loops an animation, and once it finishes, they stop. So, you've gotta be wary that the arrow will fly. You have to do the arrow. The arrow will always stay. But the mage, the magic, it appears wherever the enemy is. So if the enemy is right here, the enemy is right here, the magic effect will appear there. Enemy is right here, magic effect will appear here. Uh, no matter where the enemy is, the arrow will always have the exact same trajectory. So you just gotta, like, have the arrow fly really fast so that nobody notices. That's the secret. And you know what I hate about the RTP? You know what I despise about the RTP? Sure, there's no classes that have multiple motion types, but here's what I hate about them. What the hell? Here's what I hate about them. Look at that arrow! Okay. Womp, womp, okay. In the process of four frames, which each take six, sec uh, six frames, which is actually seven frames, he just does it, and then bam, immediately he just... Bam, okay. And then the arrow, like, jumps up by 30 pixels, and then just flies, and then each one of these is also 6. Let's set it all to 2. Okay, not the best. Um, let's set it to, like, let's put a little pause before here. Isn't that, like, okay, maybe not 9. Let's set it to 3, and then have this be 9. Doesn't that just feel better? Compared to this, <laughs> uh, I, I I don't like how slow everything is. It's not how slow it is, it's how slow it feels. Anyways, I, I should stop ranting. Here is the animations information. Now, by default, I don't know what it looks like by default, but in Acid, do not scroll in battle. Basically, like I said, by default, the characters spawn like a million feet away from each other, and then, as they move, it scrolls. It's a pretty cool effect, but it, it it's a pale, pale imitation of genealogy. Skip move motion. Basically, with this, uh, there is no movement. They just start right next to each other. And start That's it. <laughs> Honestly, I can I can show this off. I thought I selected skip. I did not. I turned it off. As you can see, it's something you have to work with in mind. Because they still start... Uh, away from each other, and that's what boundary setting is for. Um, if you want to skip the move motion, you're gonna have to set it all the way to 
Uh, to, to 420, I think? Uh, you know what? I actually don't understand what this is. Uh, I'll be frank, I have no idea. Just, just know that in Acid I set it to 400 with the refurbished animations. Anyways, the initial position for motion is the first frame of move. Basically means it skips weights. Now, you know me, I love the weight. Uh, honestly, let me, let me show that off. Uh, well now. Oh, no, 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 that's not what it is. Okay. That's not what it is either. Wait, then what the hell is this? The initial position of the motion is according to the first frame of the move motion type, not the edge of the screen. Uh... Wait. Wait. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. I think I understand what that means now. Let me just check to see if I still have it enabled. Let me just check something. You learn everything about every day. I don't see what that changed, actually. I don't get it. Ignore it, then. Okay. Um, then use magic weapon attack even for direct attacks. I know this one, actually. If the unit is equipped with a weapon that is set to magic attack effect and weapon effects, indirect attack will change to magic weapon attack in real battle. If you check here, direct attack will also be changed. Basically, this means if you attack with a magic weapon from one range, they'll use their one range animation. If you attack from two range, they'll use their two range animation. But if you click here, no matter what, they just always use the two range animation. Eh. I, I could see the appeal, but I actually kind of hate that idea. Uh, <clears throat> now, cut in. Uh, I don't actually know. If you check here, the cut in will be displayed in the center of the screen. If you don't check it, it'll be based. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's cut ins. Uh, I don't really work with them, but there's cut in effects, and it's for like critical hit effects, you know, all these types of things, you know, shows a character's face. It's in there's nothing like that in RTP, you have to make it up yourself. And basically, you click here and it centers it on the screen. Click here and it centers it on your character. Makes sense. And then you have the offsets, which makes sense. Motion offset, I've messed around with this and I don't see a difference no matter what I set it to. Then finally, editor. Uh, this is pretty cool. Sample background, by default, it's actually none. And it looks like this. I like setting it to uh, planes. Let's set it to Blood Gulch. Here's Blood Gulch. <laughs> and then Sample Enemy. Uh, it's usually Archer for me, but for some reason, yeah, the Archer has been messed up lately and I don't understand why. So now it's Assassin. Then uh, Sprite Color. This is pretty simple. So, show rectangle. The sprites are uh, rectangled in black. And the key, the, oh, this is gonna be very important, the focus sprite, which is very important, do not forget, is blue. And then we have the battle map. There's something called battle test, but like, it's... It's not what you want. It's not what you'd want. Yeah, like, you could just close this and then map test it yourself. It's not that important. But it is set here, because that is my test map. And so just set it to your test map, I guess. If you- I, I won't use it. I never use it. Alright, enemy, enemy moves when attacking. Wait. These don't really matter. Uh, anti-interpolation mode, you might as well. It's, pr it's pretty useful. Basically, um... Whenever you rotate- let's go to Archer, because they rotate. <coughs> oh, oh, you know, this is what it looks like. But then interpolation mode, it looks a lot smoother because it like blurs it. It blurs it so that you don't aren't focused, forced to look at this. But if you do this, it's super ugly. <laughs> okay. Uh, effect on the motion types and changing weapon. You know we have a weapon here. We can change it to see what it looks like with different weapons. Here's what it looks like coming in with the devil bow. 
and then this basically means that it changes other motion types and change a weapon. So basically, if you don't have that checked, it only changes for weight, but if you do have it checked, uh, wait no, yeah, if you do have it checked, it changes it for all of them. Uh, you see? Then, so like, a lot of these don't really matter. Uh, interpolation mode is very important though, because like, this actually affects how the game looks. It's defaulted to on though, so that's good. Uh, display enemy during enemy direct attack. Basically, it's to help me understand like what these guys are supposed to look like when they fight. I need these guys to be closer. I wish they were closer. And then enemy moves during attacking. This one's pretty useful. Okay, you attack, and then enemy offset. Let's move the enemy back a bit. Now it's like you uh, knocked him back. I don't use it often, but when I do, I go crazy with it. Look at the land schnit, for example. You see? <laughs> I don't use it often. Because when I do, it's gotta be important. Don't, don't just put it on everything. I, you could. You could put it on everything. I personally don't. Alright, um... That's all. Now, I'm gonna tell you... Uh, I'm gonna guide you through my process of animating the Emperor. Now first off, the weight motion plays first. So it's where I put the entrance animotion, animotions, animations. But... I don't want the Emperor to walk in. I want them to already be standing there, and then they do a dramatic turn. So let's instead do the Hellrider, because I want to show you guys how I have someone ride in. Um, now first off, you have to put them off. You have to put them off screen. This should be enough to put them off screen. And uh, about six seconds is a good wait. Then after that, we, uh, we have them ride in. We, we always keep something at the end, so that we know what it's supposed to look like at the end of the motion. Now, previous frame on. Show rectangle on. If you don't do show rectangle, uh, you have to like touch the pixels of a weapon in order to move it. But show rectangle, you can just click and drag it all over. Very helpful. Also, it lets you know, like, you know this? It's not perfect. Dang, what the heck am I supposed to be doing? Show rectangle? Oh, I see. Just move it one to the right. Bam. Now it's the exact same as here. Speaking of the exact same as here, let's move this guy about 20 frames? We're, we're gonna have a move. 20 frames? Doesn't seem right. Let's make him move 30. 30. 30 pixels. And you can click and drag and approximate. Yeah, I just clicked and dragged, and then I saw that this is 213 and that was 214, so I just changed it to 213. Okay, let's move him 30 more pixels. Now let's move this guy 30 more pixels. 30. 30. 30. 30. I've been forgetting to change the anime. Yeah, you gotta change the sprite every single time. I forgot to do that. Thirty-seven, zero. But honestly, ten it by by thirty. Oh, hold on. That was, that's supposed to be sixty. Looking at it right now, 30 every frame doesn't really feel perfect, you know? But, but we'll see, we'll see. And then, let's say right before he gets to his destination, which is 324, he's gonna do a jump. Now, we can have this guy jump, because he has jumping holes. Let's 
let's change this. Uh. That doesn't really work. Like, yeah, he's jumping, but he's not jumping, you know? But at the same time, it's not, not really working. So instead, of, let's have him jump here. This is where he jumps. Previous frame. You know, he's, he's charging up for the jump. And then that's when he jumps. And you can change the... It doesn't have to be aligned to 3, 138. 138 is the default, it is the floor. But you don't have to set it to that. Doesn't really work. There's, a lot of this is just like seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. I think they're jumping too fast. So let's add a bunch of in between sprites. downward here. So that we have two frames where he's on the downward. And then after he lands, let's add a delay. And let's add a sliding effect. You know, this is just a very simple one. It's not nearly at the level I usually do, but this is just me showing off how I usually do things, you know? Ch keep changing it till it feels right, and never have a frame more than three frames per sec- uh, three frame speed. Never set the- th never set the frame speed to something over three. Let's just, uh, add some more frame speed. See, isn't that- that's not better than absolutely nothing? So let's go back to the general. I want him to just be there already and then turn dramatically. The Emperor, I mean. Looking at what we currently have... Okay, how about he's here? And then like... Okay. So I'm gonna have him... Basically, I'm just gonna do whatever this is. I think it's just indirect. No, it's uh... I have no idea where this is supposed to be used, but, um... We're just gonna have him. Yeah, he's gonna be here. Uh, first off, what you should do is make a blueprint. You know, he's there, the cape flows a bit, and then he... Bam! Thrusts out his arm, pointing intimidatingly his sword. Well, maybe a lance to be given to him. You see the... You see, in the animation, the hand goes back, so you move the sword back with it. I see this like... 25... 24. Okay, so now... Very simple, right? Um, I think 
looks like this. Uh, cape? I just said never put anything over three. Let me elaborate on that rule. So basically, if you want something to flow smoothly, make it look as though one thing goes to the other, anything over three doesn't work. There's a clear, obvious delay when there's four or more. But that actually works with capes, because when capes move, they move pretty slowly, and they look really cool. You know, a cape, uh, yeah, capes flap pretty quickly sometimes, but if they flap at a four frame speed, they actually look pretty cool. I just want to set this one to, uh, I'll set this one to three, and then this is rest. When it's at rest, we don't need anything, because, you know, he's just sitting there. So, so the cape fl floats down, whomp. We give him some time to some time to think about his next action. And let's do a minor movement. You see you see that little shift right there? That kind of it tricks the eye into the thing. It sees this subtle movement, and it's like, oh, this character is making subtle movements right before his major action. Uh, it's not really a tweening frame, but I'll call it a tweening frame. It's, it's not a tweening frame at all. I am not going to get into tweening frames, unfortunately, because, um, SRB Shooting does not have tweening frames. Also, you know what? Uh, the default has his foot there. So we're kind of going to have to change all of these. I'm going to move it here so I can turn on previous frame and adjust it this way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it looks like we're gonna have to move everything by 9. Yeah, that's just gonna turn it all to 15, so let's just change it all to 315. Let's go turn it to 366. Let's turn it to 366. What happened here? Oh. Something happened. I'll explain what it is in post. I think that this animation is too long. Let's change by six. Yeah. You know what else we're gonna do though? Let's add a cool effect when he flips the sword. Now I know I just did. I do the exact same thing that I did for the Baron. Look at this guy. Wait. Look at this guy. Comes in, and then he flaps the cape, and there's a fire effect. And I think I want to do the exact same thing here with the Emperor. Because this Emperor, in case you didn't know, is based on Arvis FE4. Uh, of course, that's a pretty studio based on Fire Emblem, I never would have guessed. He's based on Arvis. Then I want to add a little fire effect as a reference to that. Now, I can't... I want to do, like, exactly the Baron thing, where he's, like... You know, with his co clo clo cloak around him, and then he swings his sword. That should be good enough. Also, you know what? Let's change this a bit. Instead of being at 180, let's have him be at 170. Previous frame it so we know what we're doing. Yeah, there we go. If things are at perfect um, cardinal angles, it 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 doesn't trigger interpolation, but it just doesn't look right. Yeah, see that? It's a little sloppy, and you know nobody's perfect. The sloppiness adds a night loop, nice little thing where someone sees the sloppiness as a, ignore my friends, they're talking about homestead. Sees the sloppiness as all like, oh wow, that's really nice, you know? Like, you can have this super all powerful evil emperor guy, uh, super evil powerful emperor guy, just give him sloppiness, even if it doesn't fit the character, because it just looks nice to look at. Okay, these are all six frames. Let's change it to two. 
I'm gonna teach you a little technique that I... Well, I don't know what I like to call it. I don't... I have a thing I call it. I guess I'll call it... Um... Parallel... Parallel animation. Da. Yeah. So basically, this guy. He holds out his sword for six frames, right? The fire lasts for two frames. And I'm just gonna change it to one. Die! Oh, shut up! How long are they gonna talk about this? I'm tired to... the zoom a bit. In fact, let's also increase the zoom a bit here. No, that's, that's not right. Let's, uh, switch to this, and then turn down the opacity. And then, you know... However, I was just talking about parallelism. Let's change it so that halfway through the animation of the fire going, he changes to his cloak down version. And with his cloak down version, we change the angle of the sword and how he holds it. Where he holds it, rather. See? Pretty simple. He's just sticking. Here's the big one. He is moving. I want him to stop at three. F <laughs> he, he's moving for 18 frames. And he, he ends at 96. I thought he ends at like 314. Oh, wait. There we go. Yes, yeah, so they're supposed to end at 314. They start... Did I start at six? I thought they started at like four. Okay, so they start at 440 and they end at 314. Three, three, yeah, 314. But the default is not how it works. And you gotta change this. Now, you could, like, cut it down a bit, you know, trim it. I'm just gonna start from scratch. 440. Bring the weapon down with it. Don't change its Y, only change its X. There's benefits to putting it in front of and behind. Behind works when, um, putting the sword behind them works when they're just holding out their hand, because it prioritizes the hand and makes it look like, oh, they're, I see their hands, I'm clipping clip that sword. In front of them works if there's something else, like the wings of a wyvern. If there's the wings of a wyvern, you have to put the sword in front, or else people won't even see the sword, because it's blocked by the, the character. I'm gonna, there we go. So, he starts at 4.40. As you can see, he starts with his uh, right foot up and his left foot down. His next animation. You know, I'll be frank, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I just want to, I just want to last 6 animations. Uh, now, normally, it's probably proper to have the enemy move like a constant, oh, 30 frames every, every frame. 30 pixels every frame. But, I want this guy to be a little slower. I want him to be armored. And I want him to be more intimidating. And I want him to have a bit of swing in his walk. As such... As accurate as we can to how he walks. That's very slow. I forgot that this is still set to 6. Three. Yeah, and of course we move them a little fo more forward than we want to. We don't want it to be perfectly pixel accurate because that's just like that's just needlessly slow. 
And eventually... Going exactly based on this. Hey guys, have you ever seen this uh this this swirly thing go above your mouse? Save the project as soon as you can. Because the animation studio likes to crash. When it doesn't make sense. And that's end him at 314. He's got a bit of a swing to his rhythm, but at the same time, he, he's going way too fast near the end. At the same time, though... I don't really want him to go this slow. That's kind of embarrassing. And also, he teleports to the end. That's kind of stupid. That's just for... Okay. That's how I want to do things. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work. So instead... 440 to 314. He's moving about, like, ugh, five. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Let's have him go 20. 20 per frame. That's pretty fast. Maybe a little too fast. Uh, either way, he's gotta end. At 314. Ugh. Ugly. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Good. Yeah. He's moving. He he's slow enough that you see that his legs are moving, but he's fast enough that's not full. That's not boring. Um now finally is the walk motion. Uh sound effects. See, that's good. And that was him. I'm very tired now. I do not want to finish this. Let's do critical move and just have him... Ooh, you know what we were doing? We were doing for the critical move? Yeah, for the critical move, we're gonna have him, like, stop every step. You know, really, really draw it out. So, you know, the enemy knows that Doom is approaching. Now, Doom, let's have it approach. Bwomp. There we go, that's the crit enemy. Alright, I'm back. And, uh, so, first off, let's change that. Now we got it better. We got the move. So, first things first, upgrading the direct attack. Now, I think this direct attack is actually pretty alright. It's just missing quite a lot. 
Now, my refurbished animations use a sheet of tweeting frames that I got from DeviantArt. However, that's not really gonna be a part of this tutorial, so I'll make this guy without it. Let's, uh, the main thing I want is just making this better, adding more frames and making it so it's truly charging up a sword, a heavy sword swipe, swipe and smacking it down. You know, full of power. So, obviously, I'm thinking that it's actually going to... Alright, so the sword goes down a bit. However, this cape needs to move down faster. And then we're gonna have a lot of... There we go! Oh, nice! Nice! There we go! In fact, you know what? There we go. Um, what if we just... Of course, in order to do that, I think we should, uh... Increase the rate that the sword drops. Alright, so <clears throat> what I've done is the three simple methods that I use a lot. First off, minor movements, that being the sword, and of course lining them up so that they look good together. The sword makes very subtle movements across a small amount of frames, or rather a large amount of frames, with a small amount of time. Now, it's not as intense as other times I use this method, but it still is present. Next is, uh, what I like to call... I don't actually have a name for it, but it's like, uh, overlapping movements, where like, you know, this... The, the cape has three main movements. And then, tied into the cape's movements are the sword's movements. But the sword has four movements, so I copy-paste this middle frame, and then give the middle sword movement to this copy-pasted frame, and then I split it up. There's normally three, and I made it two and one. And now with that... Rapidly... Yeah, you see that? But, small little thing. Well, this this frame doesn't actually matter that much because you're hardly gonna see it. Its main purpose is to be a fusion between this and this. So like, he's not even holding the sword here. But you don't see that. All right, so after that, he's gonna after the hit? Also, I want the hit to be on this frame. Oh, you know what? Let's, uh, move this.
There we go. <clears throat> so, what I just did there, of course, was I played the animation over and over and over to myself, looking for any minor imperfections in how it moves. And I didn't really think it looked bad. So I decided, you know what, it works. And I've decided to call it finished. Minor thing though, uh, you see, like I said before, I use these tweening frames, so I'm just gonna do one of those. How about this one? Nice. That is powerful. I'm gonna close out of this and then save the pro- And then save the project. Now we have Direct Attack 1. Um, <clears throat> let's go directly into Indirect Attack- uh, into Direct Attack 2. So, as you can see here, he starts from the bottom and swings to the top, except it looks like he's just moving his sword upwards. Frankly? So, let's get the frame from Direct Attack 2. Uh, why is it not aligned? I don't know. And let's uh, align it. In fact, you know what? Let's uh, let's have a single frame where he's kind of like moving the sword back. Oh, uh, that. Wait, that actually gives me an idea for his crit animation. Uh, let's not do the crit yet, though. Let's just let's just keep it in mind. Okay. Of course, we want this to be. And then like this. That's uh No, that's that's the same as before. Alright. It's just aligned like that for some reason. I don't know why I don't know why it's aligned like that. I don't know why Nash keeps appearing, but he does. Wait, it's not the same. Yeah, I'm liking this. I am liking this. Honestly? The only thing I don't like is, uh... Why is the detect hit all the way over there? And let's, uh, remove one more frame. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Now, the crit animation. One of the biggest things about animating is, of course, getting inspiration. And as you saw, I just got inspiration right there. You might be able to guess what I'm doing. He's gonna, like, charge up, charge up, and then do one massive smash. Ooh. I can also teach you how to add magic effects. Alright, let's do that. So first off, I want him to slide back. So, this does lead to a conundrum. I've got two different ideas for his crit attack. I can either have him charge up some fireball alongside his attack, or hit the ground to create a earth shockwave. However, why did I do that? That's gonna be hell. However, I kind of... Already did that. Whereas, I haven't really done the fireball idea. So let's, here's my idea, I'm going to have him charge up the fireball here, and then for the remainder of the fireball's charge up, I'm just going to copy paste frame 10. I'm also going to change all of these, yeah, all of these to this, to two frames. Frankly, I may have to... Um, 
What's it called? Uh, I may have to set it to uh, one frame. Maybe. Here we go. This is going to be the fireball. And this is going to be the, uh, the charge up. Uh, let's see where this ends up. There we go. Uh, let's have it start a little opaque. There we go, that's perfect. Yes, 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 yes. Good. Guten Tag. Alright, how much does this go? Only two frames? Okay. Two. Frankly, you know what? Make it go a little faster here. Fireball's been formed. Like, I kind of wanted the fireball to, like, kind of a little disperse a little, and then he swipes. You know what? I do think we need the, uh... So I'm thinking, pretty simple. It grows big. And then, he attacks. I still want this fireball to disperse, but a little faster, and then he just like, okay, okay, okay. So, speed up the dispersal. And create a new one. And it will be the fire breath. Uh, let's start here, though. And, uh, let's start the fire breath here as well. Skip every other frame, I don't, I don't need that much. Let's also angle it. Maybe not angle it that much. this fireball to like disappear as well and go into an explosion which would be three fire effects in one attack but sure use the flame and brew I guess uh, let's start a new effect this is not what I want. I kind of want like a fire explosion. So that's also not what I want. That, honestly? Let's do it. Mm. 
Oh shoot, I wanted to end here, which is 324, which is the default. Now I should have done this beforehand, but I forgot. So there will be times where you have to suffer like this. Wait. You know what, let's just when I was a kid, whenever I got in trouble, well, most times I got in trouble, I had to write sentences, which is writing one sentence over and over and over again, usually until it filled a page, usually multiple page, maybe I had to write it a hundred times. I developed a method that made it much easier to write said sentences, and that was, instead of writing the sentence a hundred times, I would instead write the first letter of the sentence a hundred times, then the second letter, and so on and so forth, until I wrote the entire thing. Uh, Bart Simpson made, like, a mechanical device, but I would not have done that, because it would have been too hard to control, also I didn't watch The Simpsons. Eventually my parents stopped doing that because they realized that uh, it had no effect on me, because I was just finding ways to avoid it, and then ultimately it's like, well, if he's not trying to learn the lesson, he won't learn the lesson anyway, so let's just stop that and instead start beating his ass. So, <coughs> ooh. done everything, let's... What the hell? What is the point? <laughs> Who did that? Avoids are kind of funny. I just have this on screen. On. Now, Indirect attack. As you can see, he's pretty far away. I don't want him to be far away. Just like movement, we're gonna have to move him to start at 440. But basically, his animation here is uh, hold sword back and then throw it forward. It's kind of funny. First off, you know, there is something you can do. I don't quite remember. No, that's not what I want. I, I don't know what it is, but I think what I just did there messed it up. Eating Oreos in a hot car. So, the version, uh, the RTP wants me to like, Which, uh, I don't think looks good. <laughs> yeah. huh. Let's see. I don't really see the Emperor throwing a sword. Hmm. I don't know. How's about... <clears throat> oh, wait. A little trick you can do is, like, 
the before throw. Put it before the before throw. There we go. That, that, it looks slightly better than RTP, but I still don't think it looks good. So, I'm thinking... Let, let me look at this. I can use this. Wait, what? What the hell? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, okay. Actually, I'm gonna save. Remember to save because this engine is not good. <laughs> because this engine is very finicky and sometimes likes to crash. However, it's also very good and doesn't crash often. So, you'll be lulled into a false sense of security. Never be lulled into this false sense of security. Save. Save the game. Okay. I'm thinking that he, uh, <clears throat> he does this. You know what? Yeah, okay. I'm kind of gonna ignore all of these sprints. I want him to really hurl this weapon. Use both hands. Be a man. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. Protect throw. Frame speed one. Detect hit. Wait. Very important lesson that I entirely forgot. In indirect attack motions, you have to set the weapon. Uh oh. Focus on Sprite. What did I do? Other- because as soon as an attack is rendered, it will remove the sword. It will remove the weapon. If you don't want it to do that, you're gonna have to add Nash. He's gonna be here. Hello, Charlie. And then, focus on this sprite, because it removes the focus sprite, and so it removes Nash. And you have to remember to keep Nash in the animation up to the very end. Because something has to be the focus sprite. And if it is not Nash, then it will be one of the other weapons. I'm not gonna have it be Nash. I'm gonna do what's intended. And have it so that, since it's the focus sprite, and it only disappears when- what the hell? Basically, the intention is for your, your sword to just, like, miss. Well... Frankly, and the only reason I moved it that much is- oh, right, something else. There we go. The only reason I had it spin so much is because I wanted it to, uh, have the blade actually hit you on the hit animation. Some don't do this, and when it's noticeable, it's really jarring. Sometimes it's not noticeable, that's good, but sometimes it is noticeable and I hate it. Um, but since he's supposed to be, like, Rolling this massive, mighty weapon. Frankly, can, uh, let me just replace this with like a big one so I get a better feeling. I'm gonna have it not actually rotate that much. And, you know, be affected by gravity more. And then, I want it to stick into the ground. So the tip of the sword has to match. Uh, yeah. There we go. Pretty normal. Pretty simple, you know? And I know exactly what I want to do for my crit indirect. <laughs> We're stealing this. <laughs> We're just stealing this. Now, small issue, we need him to start at 440. I don't know what this is or how it works. At all. I, I, like, I really don't. I don't know what this is for. What the? What the? Whoa! I, what does shift do? Like, what? There we go. That's... 
That's insane. I didn't. Oh, I just found this out right now. If you hold control and move your guy, it changes the. <laughs> That's actually an extremely useful tool. All right. <clears throat> so let's start by moving everything a hundred pixels back. That's right. He's literally just gonna do his crit animation, but from afar. That's my idea. And I think it works really well. Frankly, I think this type of thing works better as a crit animation. Uh, as an indirect animation, rather. Ranged animation. We did it. That's what it will end up looking like. This is gonna take a while, while, this is gonna take a while, while, this is gonna take a, take a, a while. You know what, I was gonna have everything move by a hundred and then another eleven on top of that, so that's like perfectly within the 440 range. But, given how he starts crouched, like, uh, 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 what, what did I just do? Hmm? I have no idea what I just did. But anyways, he's gonna He's gonna start crouched, so like, imag I imagine that he like, crouches down, right? <sighs> I don't know what I just did. I'm scared. So I don't actually need to move it back for uh, 111. It's my 111th birthday! Work smarter, not harder. Remember that, kids. It's a very important lesson. Now you may be wondering, what the hell does that lesson even mean? That's for you to determine in every single scenario. It is a case-by-case -case, uh, lesson that you will have to discover the unique meaning of every single case. But yeah, work smarter, not harder. And what I just did was called working smarter. Actually, working smarter, not harder is basically just a way of make, saying, hey, you're allowed to be lazy as long as you're smart about it. So yeah. Work lazier, not harder. Hell yeah, that looks good. That looks. You know what? No, he doesn't reach four foot. Oh wait, when he does. He totally reaches four forty. He does it. <laughs> we don't need to do a thing. Work luckier, not harder. It's moving out of control. It's not. It's not shutting down. It's not shutting down. God in. Shutting down. Attempting shut down. It's. What the hell? Huh? What? I think, I think I created the Resonance Cascade scenario. Alright, um, alright. Now. Yeah! I'm gonna say it. I am going to say it. Hell yeah. Um, sound effects? I don't care about sound effects. If my employers would like sound effects they can add their own as bonded you know i will add sound effects eventually you know what yeah let's let's add sound effects um first off this attack animation it's it's like a charge up what you know basically with the 
I think that's actually perfectly fine. And remember, uh, the tech throw will play a throw sound effect. You don't need to put your own throw sound effects. Unless you want it to be louder. Yeah! And then the same for the crit indirect. Pairs up pretty well, right? Now, there's only two more things left. That would be the magic attacks, which are not enabled by default. Um, I'm pretty sure I already went over them in the last video, so I'm just gonna let that. I'm just gonna. Now, magic attack is actually very simple. Um, Vaughn does it in that it's just an attack, but like they they like stay in this they stay in this pose as the attack happens. I don't like magic effect, I'll be honest. I think it's very clunky. I don't I don't think it works that well. I would rather there are two types of magic effects. Like the one that needs a loop and the one that just needs a, a command. Like a bolt of lightning doesn't need a loop. A bolt of lightning, you 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 point your finger and that tells the animator, "Okay, bolt of lightning effect." Meanwhile, something like flux that does need a loop. So you have flux, and you're like, okay, loop these frames. <laughs> ah, okay, let's do it. Um, what I do is I have the guy hold out the weapon, and then have that be the loop, which is how the GBA games do it. Hey, wait. Yeah, let's let's do that. Honestly, let's just copy this. And that is how I do magic loops. <laughs> that is how I do ma They're good, they look good, okay? But also, super easy. Now, crit magic loops I usually have to work towards because my plan. He's gonna hold it up like this. And then, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a shining effect. I do this a lot. We're gonna take damage, large. And then, uh... <laughs> Ding! And then let's remove it. Give some breathing room. You know? Honestly, I think it's a little too, a little too slow. Nothing, something I like to do. That's why we had the gray area. There we go. And with that, we have created our fighter motion. Let me save real quick. And create the fighter. Let's just do it right here. Um, Emperor. That's what he's called. And let's just do this. Okay. I was about to go all like, okay, and then you set it over to your RTP Emperor. Yeah. Um, I kind of edited the RTP directly, so I don't need to do that. I can just use this. Uh, so. This isn't gonna be how to make a class tutorial. I'll just, like, give him some, some neat bases. You know, basic stuff. Let's give him stabs, because that's cool. Uh, conditional show, that's pretty good, but we don't have that. Battle motions is what we're going to need. I usually copy-paste it from the others, but let's do this from scratch. Wait, fine. Move, fine. Critical move, critical move. Finish move. Uh, it's set to critical move 
but I don't know if it works. Move attack. It's fine. Move attack is when you move to attack. Crit move attack is a crit attack. Finisher move attack with my plugin is crit attack. Direct attack one, direct attack two, crit direct attack one, crit direct attack two. If you want direct crit direct attack two, you can make it. I don't really care, I just have it be the same crit animation. Crit direct finisher, indirect attack, crit indirect attack, avoid, avoid, damage, damage, magic weapon attack, and crit magic weapon attack. Pretty simple. Compare against Charlie, and that's all we need. And that was my do it with me tutorial on fighters. We have two more, but they're significantly easier. Let's get the boner. Yeah, because he just crouches down. So I'm thinking we hide the boner. <laughs> I have no idea what I just did, but you know what? I don't care. So as we can see, the boner rises up out of the ground. <laughs> I, I can't even begin to describe what I've just done. I guess I'll just add some more frames because he's, he's, he's moving really fast. Alright. Now, this is uh, one of the later RTP motions, so it's actually good. <laughs> you know? Let's do it my way for what is a man what has he got except for of course the size of his gut ah, what a tackling lunatic okay so so obviously where's the arrow come from There we go. So, what did I just do there? If you were paying attention to my previous lesson, you would know. Frankly, I have no idea what I did there. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, he, he pulls back the- So this is important, this is important. The arrow kind of twitches. This, like, shows a buildup of power, which some of you may not want. I'm bow biased, so I make my bows super powerful. Give them a little bit more frames. Just really show them off. Here's a small little trick that I won't be able to show off anywhere else. Jamarki. You have now just added Jamarki. I think this is actually fire. Let's just lower the frames by like. One each. <laughs> the RTP motions later on are actually good. Um, longbow attack? You don't need this. You do not need the longbow attack. However, so Japan Web made some longbows, and the arrows are bigger than normal. Wait a second! I completely forgot! Once he releases the bow, no more pullback. But there's another trick you can do that I quite like. Uh, let's let's turn it back to the normal bow real quick. There we go. Bam. Okay, one frame. Bam. Okay. Now the bow has been uh, shot from so hard. that it has done this. It really adds a sense of power. One that I don't want the Skella Boner to have. Since the bows, bow guys, don't get like any frames, if you have a hybrid class, which is always non-RTP, you can uh, set their opacity to zero, and then create an option 
I, that's what they're called, just a new sprite, using their fighter motions. <laughs> I do that a lot. You have so much more freedom with that. Um, I think the, 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 the vandal or the horseman? Probably the horseman. Oh, right, yeah, so, you know the... This guy has no movement, but I want him to run into frame. So what do I do? Use their movement frames. Pretty simple. I go back to the boner. There's a lot you can do here. The most simple thing you can do is um, have them spin the arrow beforehand. It's super common, pretty flashy. People like it. I like it. So I'm gonna do. Actually, let me show off one of my favorites, uh, the adventurer. He throws the arrow into the air. Haha. <laughs> Alright, let's just... He takes out the arrow from behind him. And then set the frame speed to one, blah blah blah. And then just sequentially. do this, pretty much. Bam! You know, super simple. And you know what else you can do? I like to do the... Tempest? The tornado. It lines up very well. See? It's perfect! That is extremely goofy. Let me, uh... There we go. Because of this, it gives the illusion that it's like slowly moving to the left as it spins. So he's like moving closer as well. I, 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 I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. It's done. Frankly, mages, super simple. You gotta have them enter the battlefield. Um, I don't like the lizard, so I'm not gonna put any thought into it. Let's have him warp in. The wizard, the lizard is warping in, the lizard is warping in, the wizard is warping in, the wizard is warping in, the lizard is warping in, the lizard is warping in, the lizard is warping in. And then we have them warp into the map, and then it looks super good inside of me. I don't even know that he does the thing, and there's nothing more, so this is the end of him, but now. This goofy goober. Well. <laughs> the lizard is warping in, the lizard is warping in. Well. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, this is fine. <laughs> Any any special <laughs> techniques I usually do for wizards, uh, mages? Let's do the just, the just the simple flash on his eye. The one that actually started with the gun mage. The oh, lizard is whopping and the lizard is whopping and the lizard is whopping and the lizard is whopping in. Lizard is whopping and the lizard is whopping and the lizard is whopping in. Here he comes. Alright, um, super simple. Honestly, I can add a little bit more.
There we go. I wanted to show off how to make a mana key. Right. So the dragon, this guy. Let's just do something really simple. Dragon, of course, so opacity is zero. Never change the zoom. If you change the zoom of the key, everything changes. Oh. Like I said, it lulls you into a false sense of security. I don't know if I saved the lizard, but I don't really care if I did or not. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't save him. <sighs> ah, shit. Fuck. Motherfucker. He looks like a mannequin. What the hell? So the druid... It's gonna be here. Hey guys, quick intermission. You see, um, small, small thing I forgot to mention. Uh, when you use the option and have it set to a emotion, then it, uh, it changes the color depending on the color of the unit. So if they got a special color, or if they're red, or if they're green, then it'll use those colors. Okay, bye. After, let's say, seven frames, the druid, he's all like... Something like this. Uh, Fire Emblem Fates has them like come out of a cocoon or something. I'm not gonna do that. It's probably the simplest and easiest solution with the RTP. But I've got like a a, a hatred against Fire Emblem Fates. I think it's a really good game, but also I hate its like art style and several things that it stands for. So I'm gonna try to do better than Fates. This is a pretty good one. It looks like a transformation, which. You know, they do. Alternatively, if you, if you want, like, a, a fire dragon, you could easily have it be a fire effect. You know, be elemental, but... Eh, this this guy just looks normal, so I'm gonna have it be normal. Except I'm gonna have it start earlier. In fact... Much earlier. This is not enough. This is not enough. We're at two going on. Honestly? Uh. There we go. I have this type of effect going on, so uh, it's kind of. And then also start lowering the opacity of the guy in. Frankly, I say frankly a lot. What if we like... Yeah, I think... And remember, don't change the zoom of the key because that'll mess everything up. I don't know why, but it do be like that. <laughs> that it's a little I think we skipped 20 frames and you know it's dragon dab It's, it's all right. It's an all right effect. This is basically the idea of how to do it. This is a very, 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 very simple manikeet, okay? <laughs> very simple. I believe I've given you enough knowledge for you to be able to learn it out on your own the rest of it. Figure it out yourself. My time here is finished. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So, that is my full animation tutorial and walkthrough, kind of. I'm pretty tired.
but that's that's all you need to know. Obi gone, carry on. The lizard is warping and the lizard is warping and the lizard the warping and the lizard is 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 warping and the lizard the lizard is warping and 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 the lizard the lizard is whooping in 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 the lizard Hello, Internet. Welcome to Animation Theory.